Hello ladies and gents, hope you're doing well. Um, I hope you had a great weekend and are ready for another day's home learning. We're going to be carrying on with our work on decimals. So let's get started with the do now. There we go. So what I would like you to do please is can you complete each statement using the greater than or less than symbol? Um, so if you can pause the video now and pop the correct symbol in the gaps and also for your challenge can you round both numbers to the nearest whole number. So for example, 1.3, if I was to round that to the nearest whole number would be one. And then if I was to round 1.4 to the nearest whole number, that would also be one. Um, so that's your extra challenge if you choose to accept it. So pause the video now, off you go. Okay, let's have a look and see how you got on. So this is where your symbols, this is what your symbols should look like. Just pause the video now, and if you'd like to um, mark with a different color pen, pencil, that would be great. So our work for today is to order and compare decimals with hundredths. So, so far we have only been looking at tenths, which is the number immediately after the decimal point. So now we are going into hundredths, and we've got some new key vocabulary that we're going to be using today. So when I say the word, one of the star words, if you can repeat it back to me. Largest, smallest, tenths, hundredths, order. Very well done. So as a quick review, what I'd like you to do, pause the video and we recap what we did on Thursday. I would like you to add these two numbers together remember to include that decimal point okay so pause the video now and can you figure out this addition equation so hopefully you've had a chance to have a look um, and answer the question and hopefully it looks something a little bit like this probably a little neater than i would have done it's very hard for, um, writing with a mouse so the answer is 888.5 and look how my decimal points are all the way down there so, or quite often I like to use food in maths to illustrate my point. Um, so when we're looking at different Dean's blocks, I would like you to imagine that one, that these, this represents a whole pizza and is equivalent to one whole or one. We can then split this whole pizza into 10 parts, which look like this and each one of those is called a tenth. If I then split those tenths into 10 more pieces, you are then left with one that looks like this, which is called a hundredth, okay? So we have one whole, which is what we've looked at quite a bit over the last week or so. We've also looked at if we were to cut this into 10 parts, we'd have a tenth. But what we're going to do now is cut one of those tenths into 10, and that is called a hundred, so an individual cube here. And so in order to remember this, there are 10 tenths in a whole, and there are 10 hundredths in a tenth. So let's have a look at the number 4.28. So over here, I've got my place value chart and I've got some useful information here as well. So there are 10 tenths in a whole and there are 100 hundredths in a whole. So let's look at the number 4.28. How am I going to make that? Well, to start with, I'm going to go for my ones. Now, which one of these are my ones? This one. So how many am I going to need? So one. two, three, four. So that has four ones, one, two, three, four. Then we've got our decimal point and we move on to the tenths. Now, how many tenths are there? There are two. So which block am I going to grab? I'm going to grab this one. One, two. 
So remember, in one ten in one hole, there are ten tenths. Four ones, two tenths. Now this is where we go on to new ground where we look at the hundreds. So we have ones, which is the four, tenths, and then hundreds. How many hundreds are there? There are eight. So we need to add one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight. So we've got four ones, two tens, and eight hundreds. And if I were to say add two more hundreds, what would happen? If I were to add two more hundreds, then there'd be ten of them, and then that would be equivalent to one tenth. So then I'd have to regroup and move those across. So let's look at the number 6.14. So how many ones am I going to need here? So I'm going to need six ones. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. How many tenths am I going to need? Oops. I'm going to need one tenth, and then how many hundredths? One, two, three, four. So using Dean's, I have made 6.14. Our ones, our tenths, and our hundredths. So I would like you to pause the video. How would you make the number naught? Point five three. How would you make the number 0.53? How many ones am I going to need? How many tenths and how many hundredths? Pause the video now. Off you go. So hopefully you've had a bit of a think and you should realise that we're not going to need any ones here because there, is, there are zero ones. We're going to need five tenths. So one, two, three, four, five, and then how many hundredths? I'm going to need three. They're very slippery, the hundredths. One, two, and three. There we go. So that is 0 0.53. Excellent. So what I would like you to do now is, is look at these three numbers that have been represented by Dean's. What I'd like you to do, just on a spare bit of paper, can you write down what decimal number, sorry, what decimals do these deans represent? So if we've got our ones, our tenths, and our hundredths, can you then turn these deans, so number one, number two, and number three, into the correct decimal number? Okay, pause the video now, off you go. Right, so let's have a look. Hopefully you've had a chance to look at that. So how many ones do we have? We've got one one. So that's going to go there. I'm going to need my decimal point. How many tenths have I got? One, two, three, four tenths. And then how many hundredths? I've got one. So the answer would be 1.41. Let's look at this one. I've got two ones. I've then got one, two, three, four, five tenths. And I have one hundred. So the answer would be 251. No, Mr. Parker, hopefully you're all shouting at your screen. What have I forgotten there? I have forgotten my decimal point. So where should that go between which two numbers? Well, there are two uh, ones, so the decimal place goes after on there, the decimal point. Great. And with this one, we have no, um, we don't have any ones. How many tenths do we have? 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tenths, and one, two, three, four hundredths. So zero point seven four. Now you might think, why do we need this zero there? If there's nothing, can't we just put 0.74? You can, but it really is useful to have, we really should have a number before the decimal point, just as a placeholder. Normally you'd be right, because we wouldn't put zero thousandth here and then over and over and over again zeros, but we do need the zero just as a placeholder there on the one side, on this left-hand side of the decimal point. So, what we're going to be focusing on today is ordering um, decimals, so putting them in the correct size order. So, how would you, we order these numbers from greatest to smallest? Now, really important that I've read that properly, because it could easily say smallest to greatest, but in this case it says greatest to smallest. So, the first thing we're going to do is look at the greatest place value. So thousandths, hundredths, tens. So what's the greatest place value here? We don't have any thousands. We don't have any hundreds. So I'm going to have to look at my uh, tens at the highest. So we've got, uh, sorry, step two. Look for the greatest or smallest digit. Well, we're trying to find the greatest first because it's greatest to smallest. So eight tens, eight tens, and eight tens. So. We can't do step three, put them in order, so we'll have to look at step four. If they are the same, move on to the next greatest place value and compare. So the next greatest place value would be our ones, three, three, four. Excellent. So now we can put them in order. This is the greatest, so that means it's going to go first in the order because we're going from greatest to smallest. The other two are the same, so we have to repeat that fourth step and move on to the next section, which is using, um, looking at our tenths. Sorry, I'm just trying to change the pen. There we go. So let's look at our tenths. Nine tenths, seven tenths, which is the greatest there. That's going to be 83.9, because it's got 9 tenths, whereas 83.7 only has 7 tenths. So I think you'd agree, I've ordered them from greatest to smallest. Now, let's have a look at this one. So, once again, step one, look at the greatest place value. Do we have any thousandths? Nope. Do we have any hundreds? No, sorry, hundreds, I should say, hundreds. Nope. Do we have any tens? Yes, we do. We do have some tens. So let's look at those. Two, two, two. So they're all the same. So what is that? So I can't do step three. So what am I going to have to do here? Absolutely right. So we're going to have to move on to the next greatest place value, which is our ones. Three, three, three. Okay, so again, exactly the same. So what do we do then? Absolutely right. So we move on to um, we move on to the next greatest place value, which is our tenths. One, one, two. Ah, jackpot! We've got it. So we, there is one that is different. So this is the greater. Now, what, how are we ordering these? Are we doing it from greatest to smallest, or smallest to greatest? We're doing from greatest to smallest. So as the two tenths is larger than one tenth and one tenth, that's going to go first. These two otherwise are exactly the same, one and one, so we move on to the final place value, which is our hundredths. Two and one, which means we can put them in the right order, from greatest going to smallest. Okay, so now things get not particularly um, harder, but the numbers are getting a bit longer. What place value has been added, can you see? We're now dealing with numbers that have hundredths in them. So let's have a look. So what I'd like you to do is, um, is I'd like you to pause the video. Can you go through your steps to success? And can you see if you can arrange these numbers? Now, can you also read the question really carefully? 
Okay, pause the video, off you go. Okay, let's have a look. So, let's look at the first um, greatest place value. We don't have any thousandth, nope. We do have hundreds though, so let's look at those. One, two, two. So we've got these two which are the same. So we're then going to have to compare the next digits, which is the tens, three and three. It's the same, so let's move on to the next one. Two and four, excellent. We've got one which is greater, so that goes over there. Again, I'm hoping that lots of you are not just nodding along and they're actually screaming, what have I done wrong there? So on the first question, it said greatest to smallest. On the second question, it said greatest to smallest. But look at the question here. It says from smallest to greatest. So in fact, I've skipped ahead a lot of steps and have not read the question correctly. Silly Mr. Parker. So in fact, we have our first number straight away because in our hundreds, this is the only one that has one hundreds, whereas the other um, have two. So we know that this is going to be first because it's smallest to greatest. Next one. We're looking for the next smallest, three tens and three tens. Nope, that's not gonna help us. So we move on to the next one, two tens, four tens. It's very good, so we've got them which, uh, we've got a different one. This only has two ones, this has four ones. So which one's gonna go next? We're doing it from smallest to greatest. Smallest to greatest, there we go. Okay, so final one before I set you off on your independent task. Again, pause the video, read the question really carefully, okay? Um, and then come back to me when you're ready. So hopefully you've had a chance to look at that. Um, I think you guys have got it by, by this stage, so we'll go through it very quickly. We can see that we're doing it from greatest to smallest. So that's really, really important, greatest to smallest. So we're looking for the largest number first. So hopefully you guys will have seen 726, 726, whereas this is 725. So this one's definitely going to go last, but we'll um, do it in the correct order first. So our 700s are the same. 710s are the same. Sorry, our 210s are the same. Then we have six ones, six ones, and five ones. So we actually know that this one is going to be the smallest. So we can put it at the end. Even though it's greatest to smallest, we know that this one's going to be last. And now it's just seeing which is greater out of these two. So we go to the tenths. Two tenths or seven tenths. So hopefully you've seen that this one is the greatest. That one goes in the middle there. Excellent job. So for your first task, you have two sets of numbers that you need to order from largest to smallest. And then the next three, well, I'll move it up because it's just not on the screen. There we go. Can you order from smallest to largest? So um, you can pause the video now. With number five, you have to insert the correct number uh, so that um, so you can choose any, any number really there. Um, so that's up to you. So pause the video now. If you go. Okay, so there we go guys, this, this is the order that it should have gone on, so grab a different pen and paper. Um, so this is, these are all the numbers, number one being the largest, number four being the smallest, and then in these ones, number one being the smallest, and number four being the largest. And with the last one, there are a few different uh, options you could have gone for, so don't worry too much about that one. Okay, let's move on. Pause the video if you haven't marked it already. So this person has attempted to order these numbers from smallest to largest. Largest. Are they correct? Why or why not? So pause the video, have a think. This person has attempted to order these numbers from smallest to largest. Are they correct? Why or why not? Okay, so hopefully you've had a think about that and you've realized that no, they are not correct. 
And what is it that they've done wrong? So I can see that they've actually done the largest number first, and the numbers are getting progressively smaller. So what they probably haven't done is read the question properly, and they haven't arranged them, uh, um, they've arranged it from largest to smallest, which is why it's so important that we read the question. Okay, so next up, pretty much the same thing, but with word questions instead. So can you please order these things in the correct order and just make sure that you uh, read the question really carefully. And if we take the first one as an example, rather than writing a car, a small boat, and a baby elephant, can you write the numbers down instead in these gaps? Because that's how the answers will be given. Okay. So pause the video, off you go. Right, so let's have a look at those answers then. Um, sorry, I'll show you the first two first because the, uh, the final question is hidden under here. I'll just move these up for you. In case you can't see, there we go. There you go. So those are the answers for those ones there. And finally, your reasoning and your challenge. So if you read through the reasoning, read through the challenge. Again, I'm not sure if this sign here is showing up for you guys, but it is for me. Um, so maybe we'll do one at a time. So if you complete the reasoning first, and then you can come back and I'll show you the challenge. Okay, and then for those of you that would like to complete the challenge, I'll just move this one up because I don't know why it wasn't appearing on the full screen. There's your challenge there. So three different questions. Can you push yourself and complete those? Off you go. Right, and let's have a look at the answers. So, is this number sentence correct? Explain your reasoning. So no, it's not correct because the hundredths are greater in 151.99, so they've done the incorrect symbol. 9.25 false is not halfway between, because 9.25 smallest number you can make using these cards is 1.46, and then the largest number is 64.1. Very good. Well, guys, that is everything from me. Hope you enjoyed the session. Have a great rest of your day, and uh, look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.